Uh, I guess hopefully I'll just wait and it will pass by. Obviously the solar panels were just fine and dandy in their little waterproof enclosure. How any light gets in there through the raindrops I've no idea but apparently it does. This is what I want to talk about today. My trusty steed. Oh yes. Because it's now done a hundred and 58,000 miles, almost 160,000 miles, and it's just had its annual MOT. Just had to wait ages for this wireless mic to charge. Seems to be working now, so we're good. So I've done almost 160,000 miles in this car now, and it's been awesome. It's also unlocked for some reason. There we go. Don't know why it was unlocked. So as you know, after three years after you've bought a new car, Every year you have to get your car tested to make sure that it is safe for the road. And one of the things that has always limited the number of miles that I've been able to do on my, in my previous petrol and diesel cars that I've owned is they just they start to break down. They become uneconomical to own. When I bought this, I hoped that that wouldn't be the case. I hoped that as it got older, it wouldn't have the same accumulation of problems that would just make it financially a non-starter. Electric vehicles are just so much simpler than petrol and diesel cars. There's just there's so much less to go wrong with them. And so far, touch wood, that seems to be the case with this. I mean, 160,000 miles almost, that's more mileage than I've done in any other vehicle. And it sailed through its last MOT, it sailed through all its MOTs in fact. There was one advisory that I had once on corrosion for the discs and pads, basically because I hadn't used them enough, and that was at about 110,000 miles if I remember correctly. Other than that, no problem. So I, I changed the discs and pads for new ones and hopefully they'll last over 100,000 miles again. Um, I mean, I'm just gonna keep driving this thing until it becomes uneconomical to own and drive because I mean I refer to it as like my magic carpet it takes me everywhere I want to go and it does it more or less for free especially as this car being sort of so original I actually paid two thousand pounds I think for unlimited supercharging for the life of the vehicle and Tesla are as they should do honoring that so everywhere I go now in this when I supercharge is free so yeah it's amazing and the fact that it's not building up issues is a great relief. It was a punt that I'd took, and so far it seems to have been a worth taking punt. Um, my first EV was a Nissan Leaf. Unfortunately, that didn't sort of have the same, uh, didn't, didn't quite go the same way because the battery they used in that was 24 kilowatt hours, didn't have any thermal management properly. And so after sort of five or six years, people were really getting an unusable amount of range. And it's not like it started with a lot of range, it started with 80 miles and they end with about 40, which is you know fine for just driving to and from the shops, but it's not a real car, is it? You can drive it to Scotland, no matter how good the <laughs> quick charging network is. But yeah, it, this car with its bigger battery seems to have aged extremely well. And that was supported by the MOT. So yeah, awesome. Also, you might notice it's quite clean compared to normal. Well, that's because I always get my car washed before I go to an MOT. I don't know why. I think it puts me and the car in the right frame of mind for passing without any problems. Uh, maybe it's just a little superstitious thing I do because, I mean, who wants car trouble, right? Cars are amazing when they're working. Not so great when they're not. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there for the day. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, remember to leave a like and share it. You can subscribe if you want. That way you can follow me on this crazy journey. No idea where it's going. And I'll see you all in the next episode of my vlog. Bye.